What's up guys? We're in Cappadocia in Turkey, specifically the town of Gorim. It's where they have the, all the balloons. Uh, we had an intro plan for Turkey involving those balloons, but it kind of didn't end up panning out because too much time went by and it had to do with our Instagram followers being at a thousand and now it's at, I don't know, this many. Yesterday after waking up to go check out the balloons, Soup and I decided that we were going to go and do the Love Valley hike. It's a two and a half kilometer hike through the valley and we got about halfway through. We were in the very center of the valley when we heard this really faint whimper and it sounded like a dog. So we turned around and started looking and then up to our left, like right a little bit behind us, we saw this dog. It was maybe two years old. It looked like some sort of pointer with border collie coloring and he was stuck at the top of a cliff that was about four meters high. As soon as we made eye contact with it, he started barking and yelping, and it was very obvious to us that he was stuck. He had come down from the cliff above, and we couldn't really see from where we were at the time how far he had come down, but it was pretty obvious that he wasn't getting back up the way that he came, because the valley on the sides are these steep cliffs that are made of these rounded rocks with a thin layer of sand and gravel on top of them. So. Once you start trying to go up, it's really easy to slip down and lose your footing and come sliding all the way down. It really felt like if we didn't sort of do something, nobody was going to because it was just a stray dog stuck on a cliff. Soup and I started walking around the corner to see what we could do to get up to where the dog was. But as soon as we started getting out of his line of sight, he would start barking and yipping and like it looked like he was going to leap down like out of desperation. So we decided to leave Soup there where he could see him and try and keep the dog calm while I looked for a way to get up to where he was. I got up maybe three or four meters and then slid right back down and kind of got wedged between a couple rocks and I had to pry myself out and there was no way to get up to where the dog was. At that point we were starting to lose light. So we decided the best thing to do would be to put a pin in the map on my phone exactly where the dog's location was and then exit the valley and then try and go up around on the road to where he went down from the top so we could maybe come down and, and get at him that way. So we saw a few points where we thought, you know, you know, maybe we can climb up over the ridge. So in a couple different places we tried doing that, but ultimately it ended up being a lot higher than it looked and we weren't able to get out. So we ended up just wasting a little bit of time and a lot of energy. It was about 4 or 5 p.m. by the time that we made it out of the valley to the road. Luckily, we stumbled across this ATV rental shop that also had a little souvenir stand in it. But unfortunately, in Turkey, there's a pretty big language barrier if you only speak English. We only found one other person in this area that spoke English, and he basically said, I don't know whose dog that is, no, I can't help you. You know, we still had a bit of light and we were gonna do what we could, so we just pressed on on our own. When we got to the top of the ledge where it looked like the dog went down, it's one of those situations where once he slides down that first ramp and can't get back up, what do you do if you're a dog other than just keep going down further and further and further and hoping you find your way out? So I started walking in and eventually I did make it to a point where I, it looked like I was right on top of him on the map. And I started looking over the edge and I was clapping and whistling and, and calling out to him and everything. And I didn't get anything back, but we couldn't hear anything. And at this point, it was pretty much dark outside. It was just this really disheartening feeling when you're a foreigner in a country and you don't speak the language, you don't know who to call, nobody really seemed interested in helping you, and we kind of came to a point where there was nothing more we could do. So we headed back to the hotel, and it was dark by the time we got back and we talked to Emirate, and he totally turned out to be the hero of this story. And he said, you know, it's dark outside now, but the fire department would be the ones that would help. So first thing in the morning, we'll go down there. If the dog's still there, we'll call the fire department and make sure that we get him. First thing this morning, we all piled in Emmert's car, he drove us down the highway, turned down the trailhead, we drove as far down as we could in his little car before we hit a creek. We got out and we all started walking towards where the dog was. When we were coming down that trail, we could hear him from over 100 meters away. He was just barking and howling, trying to get anybody's attention, which obviously made us feel terrible, but at the same time, it was really encouraging to know that he was still there so we could still save him and we would know that he would be okay. Since the day before, when I was up on top of that ledge, you can't really see down to where the dog was, but you can see across the valley. So we figured the best thing to do would be to leave one person in the valley standing on the opposite side so that when the fire department came, they could maybe direct them down to where the dog was. So the problem on my end here was that when I had to walk to the other side of the valley, the dog got really uneasy and started doing really stupid things. He had a little spot on the grass where he was totally safe, which is where he'd been every time that we had seen him so far. 
But when I would move across the valley to where I could be seen by the fire department, the dog would run over to this really steep sandy cliff area and start doing this like backpedaling thing as his paws were slipping and all the rocks would sort of roll down underneath him and like fall to the rocks below. So I start freaking out and so I've tried to put my camera stuff down and I go run to go stand underneath him because it looked like he was going to fall. But every time that I started getting close to him, he would just kind of hop back over to the grass. So we kind of had this back and forth thing going for about an hour while I was almost crying and he was, you know, being stupid. Finally, after maybe an hour or so, I could hear a couple of voices and Emmert and Soup kind of appeared at the top of the hill, just over the crest. And I pointed out to where the dog was and fortunately from where Emmert was standing, he could actually see where the dog was and he was able to kind of go around and come down this little crevice I don't know if I've ever seen a dog this happy to see another person in my whole life. He started jumping around, his tail wagging, spinning in a circle. Emery came down and he was just like, great, we're gonna save this thing. Tries to pick him up and put him up the crevice. The dog gets a little bit up, turns around, runs back to his spot and is like, nah -uh, man, not doing it. So we're sitting there scratching our heads and Emery says, oh, do you have any water to soup? Sue pulls the water out of her bag, does this Hail Mary throw around the corner of this rock, lands it right in the crevice, just shortly away from where Emmert was standing. He picks it up, this whole liter and a half bottle, this dog just downs out of his hand in no time at all. I shouted to him that maybe he should try wrapping the dog up in his jacket and lifting him out that way. So Emmert, without hesitation, rips his jacket off, starts tying up the dog as best he can, discovers his jacket's too small for the dog. That isn't gonna work. I guess Emmer kind of decided enough was enough, picks the dog up, puts it in like the crevice where he had come down from, starts pushing from the bottom, Soup comes down to try and grab him by the scruff of the neck. But before she even got close enough, I guess the dog managed to find his footing and he just ran up right past her, up over the crest of the hill, and I thought we were never going to see him again. I felt really great that we managed to save this dog, but I was also a little bit disappointed that like that's just how it ended, he just ran off. Emmert showed it to me that he would meet me back at the trailhead and I started walking. It was kind of perfect timing. Right as I got to the end of the valley, his car was just pulling up at the creek bed where we had got out originally. And so I go and open the back door. Aww. Hey bud, no you stay. So this story that already for me had a happy ending had an even happier ending because Emmert not only was not put out by the fact that we asked him to help, but he also said that he was going to keep the dog, which was super exciting. That after being so frustrated that nobody wanted to help us at all the day before, Emmerich came up huge and like wanted to keep him, which is the most amazing thing. The back of Emmerich's car was pristine until this dog just messed it all up. He was stress shedding all over the place. Didn't smell that great, but what can you expect? And we get back to the hotel. We open the door, the dog is like all excited, sniffing around, he's coming with us up towards the stairs. As soon as we get to the stairs, bolts. I guess street dogs will be street dogs. He ran off really quickly. The dog did come back later during the day, but then left again promptly after. So Emmert said that he's gonna try feeding it and trying to get it to stick around, but I mean, there is no fenced in yard here at the hotel, so if the dog wants to leave, there's not really a lot that you can do. Yeah, I'm just glad we had a really happy ending to a super stressful situation. If you like this video, do that thing with the like button. If you want to see more of our faces, do that other thing with the subscribe button.